Hey guys, Ed Bird, and I'm back today with a shootout between the Nike Infinity Run and the Saucony Triumph 17. So my recent excursions into Saucony shoes have really reaped rewards. Finding the Triumph 17 with its rare abilities and attributes kind of left me feeling like that there was a real shootout between that and the Infinity Run. A shoe that I put over 100 odd miles into. So without further ado, here it is. So firstly, the upper of the shoes. So there's a whole menagerie of things going on in the upper of the Triumph 17. Aside from the different types of fly knit that we have here on the Infinity Run, it's quite a simple upper really in comparison to the Triumph 17. Aside from the supporting band around the back of the heel here, it's all fly knit, or at least different variations of fly knit, different sort of weaves. Some areas are slightly more flexible and stretchy than others. The Saucony has got a more plush and kind of deluxe feeling in and around the toe box area. Space in the front sort of four foot area of the shoe is very agreeable and that tongue is very very cushioned providing a real buffer atop the forefoot shielding those precious metatarsals. I feel there's perhaps a little bit more balance here in terms of the upper and the rest of the shoe. Whereas with the Infinity Run, it's a much more minimal upper and a lot more has been placed into the cushion. A lot of the weight here within the Infinity Run does feel like it's in the bottom of the shoe. Not to say that it feels unbalanced, I just feel that the balance is better within the Triumph 17. I think there's like a better sort of equilibrium between the midsole and outsole and the upper on the Saucony. In terms of lacing options on the shoes, certainly the Saucony takes it for me. It's a lot more flexible and a lot more adaptable than the Infinity Run. That flying it upper on the Infinity Run, it's literally got lace holes, you've got to use them. There's no way of kind of reconfiguring the lacing if you need to. I quite enjoyed that option on the New Balance 1080 V10 recently. I managed to adapt the lacing a little bit and now I've got a really great feeling shoe. It just gives you a few more options, I think, the Saucony to readjust the lacing, maybe change the lacing sequence a little bit if required. I think if sizing isn't quite spot on in the Infinity Run, then the Saucony perhaps is the shoe for you. I know that some people did encounter a bit of heel slippage in the Infinity Run. They couldn't quite get the lockdown that they desired. I know some people experienced that, but it wasn't really a problem when they started running. I certainly didn't experience that at all. It was a great fitting shoe for me. Though I do feel that with Nike shoes, sometimes I fall between an 11 and an 11 and a half. That side I went true to size with the Infinity Run and I've enjoyed it. So the laces here on the Triumph 17 are that kind of springy rope type. There's a much flatter lace on the Infinity Run. The Redux lack that elasticity. In terms of the upper, I would say be mindful of the arch within the upper of the Infinity Run. Some people have found it a little bit narrow. That isn't a concern within the Saucony Triumph 17. It's quite a neutral shoe, really, I find. The underfoot feel was just really, really comfortable in the Triumph 17. I'd suggest that perhaps the upper on the Infinity runs a little bit better in terms of wet weather conditions. The very first run I ever took these out in was in some dire conditions. It was chucking it down with rain, very, very wet, underfoot, and there was lots of falling rain at the same time. And the shoe did admirably well. It sort of dries out very quickly. My worry with the Saucony Triumph 17 is that there's quite a lot of foam there. There's quite a lot of upper and it could soak up some of that water and perhaps make for a overly heavy shoe towards the end of a longer run. So for me, the upper is far more comfortable in the Saucony Triumph 17, but I would suggest there's very little in it. Both shoes are very, very comfortable in terms of the upper department. But I am gonna give the thumbs up to the Triumph 17 in this round, mainly due to that configurable lacing system. There's just a far better lockdown over the top of the midfoot. So in terms of midsole, there's again very little in it. There's an eight mil drop on both shoes. There's only about two mil between the kind of heel measurement on both of these shoes. The Saucony is slightly higher in the heel, but I would say it's barely noticeable on foot. When I've kind of put one on and the other, there's, there's very little in it. They do feel very similar underfoot. But that more existent upper on the Triumph 17 does add some extra weight here. In a US size nine, you can expect around about 10.7 ounces in the Saucony Triumph 17 and about 9.6 ounces in the Infinity Run. So it's about an ounce difference per shoe. Obviously that'll go up in terms of scale as the shoe size increases. React here in the midsole of the Infinity Run. It's firm, but it's very, very bouncy. I didn't feel like it was bottoming out 
at all as the miles start to stack up on my longer runs in this shoe. But that power run plus stuff here in the Triumph 17 is certainly very jointy. It's zestful, it's dynamic. It's a midsole kind of feel that I haven't really felt in anything else. Nothing else is quite the same. I found on my initial runs that it kind of almost throws me forward. It's kind of like flinging you onwards on your run. It certainly promoted a very sort of springy stride and really bouncy turnover. That side, I could see that being a problem for some people. I think where my forms improved somewhat over the course of the last few months that I enjoyed the experience here. Yeah, I think if your form isn't quite there, you're kind of slightly less accurate with your foot strike, you could end up sort of almost bouncing across the pavement or the path that you're running on. Where I've been running in the Adidas Ultra Boost 20 recently, I found that the midsoles were just vastly different. I know they feature a similar kind of fused ball material, but they just feel so different to me underfoot. The Ultra Boost 20 almost feels kind of lopsided. There's so much in the heel and so little in the forefoot now. You just feel unbalanced. It just feels uneven, like the distribution of the foam is just all wrong. I'd suggest there's good stability in both of these shoes. I haven't felt unstable in either. Stack heights are reasonable. I'd suggest it's again a very tight call. Both shoes really do feel great underfoot, but this time I'm gonna give the thumbs up to the Saucony Triumph 17. Only by a small margin this time though. Simply due to that underfoot cushion bed, which I just think is a genius idea. You can just about see it in there. It makes for an absurdly pleasant underfoot feeling. <laughs> Onto outsole next. And where on the Infinity Run has been very, very minimal after 100 miles. There's very little creasing in that midsole at all. In fact, I can barely see any. There's almost zero wear to that outsole. It's kind of a bit mucky, but hey, that's what these are for, right? The Infinity Run, in terms of the outsole, handles dry conditions very, very well, and more moist meteorological moments with ease, apart from a little bit of slipping on some smooth stone terrain. There's enough kind of cutouts here and this quite aggressive rubber pattern on the outsole to handle grass areas also. I'd suggest that the Saucony Triumph 17 crystal rubber here is a little bit more flexible. It really does flex very, very nicely, but still delivers a relatively rigid ride. Ground feel is really good in the Saucony Triumph 17, and the shoe is certainly receptive to energy and effort that the runner is expending. The outsoles here, again, a really close call for me. Perhaps a slightly simpler design on the Infinity Run, which may suggest there's slightly less to go wrong as the outsole starts to wear a little. I always find that midsoles wear out before outsoles anyway. I think if you're looking at a shoe and saying, oh, the outsole looks worn, your midsole's probably already gone. I mean, both of these are very max cushioned shoes. They're designed to kind of soak up those long miles. But at present, I'd probably err towards the Infinity Run, only that it's proven over lots of different types of weather conditions and surfaces. Grip and resilience over time have proven uh, over lots and lots of runs. It's kind of one factor that only time can really measure. So I'm gonna give the win on outsole at present to the Infinity Run, though that may change over time. So onto value, our last category. So the cost of a shoe, it's got to play a part in how we rate it really. Again, it's neck and neck here. Both shoes clock in around about 139 pounds in the UK. Again, they both present great options for runners who are looking for a shoe that's for a higher mileage and is maximally cushioned. At present, I just can't really suggest one or the other here. I think these are both great shoes. If you're looking for something slightly lighter, this could go down really well. If you're not a fan of Nike, you can't go wrong with this Saucony Triumph 17. I've really, really enjoyed my initial runs in it thus far. Both are relatively versatile, I think. I've managed to produce some decent paces in both shoes. I'm really on the fence on this one. I'm gonna continue my testing of the Triumph 17 and I shall update you guys as and when I can. Please be sure to post your comments on both shoes if you've worn them, if you've got some experiences, good or bad. Very quick musical interlude. I recently picked up the new album from Tame Impala. It's called The Slow Rush. I've been enjoying listening to some of the singles they've released uh, over the course of the last few months on Apple Music. And now I've got the album, oh, I think it's really great. It's gonna be one of those great albums to listen to in terms of long runs, stuff to really zone out to. Uh, some really great rhythms there. Quite a variation of tracks as well on this album. There's some harder beats. There's lots of kind of 303 kind of acidy synth lines. Lots of sort of poignant vocals. It seems like a album which is a little bit more personal 
this time round from Tame Impala. It might be Time's a personal favourite of mine from this one. So do check it out, I think it was only released last week, so it's relatively new. I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching through to the end of the video guys, I much appreciate it. Do make sure you subscribe, like and share the video with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.